and 16 millimeter position. And we have uh, eight of those sectors. Each sector is totally independent. So at the same time, I can actually treat patient and I can have like four millimeter collimator from certain angle. I can have eight, I can have 16 or I can have block. Each single sector has 24 uh, sources, so I am not able to change individually each particle particle out of 192 uh, sources and beams, but I am able to work with 24 with the group of 24 sources and 24 beams. That's how perfection and actually also icon radiation uh, unit works. It, it's a fully automated treatment. So in fact, if you don't need to change patient's head position, which we can have uh, patient being treated in like three different uh, angles, horizontal chin down, chin up, um, it, it, it can be like single push start button and it can take 10 minutes, one hour, it can take easily three hours and the system is uh, 100% taking uh, care of the of the of the treatment. Of course, there must be personal watching patient, talking to patient, if uh, needed, uh, must uh, interrupt. Yeah, in the case of any medical issue. So this was supposed to be video. Unfortunately, we will have to skip it. And in couple years ago we upgraded to icon system i think which is the top latest uh, lexa gamma knife uh, uh, model which is currently available as you can see radiation unit and as already mentioned is uh, exactly identical as uh, with perfection but what is different is that we have comb beam ct so we have a, another source of radiation for imaging we can image patient uh, for QA, uh, so it's possible to QA uh, patients in frame, but mostly uh, Combeam CT is used for localization, so it is actually stereotactic uh, Combeam CT image, and you can use it uh, for patients which are being fixed in the in mask system or even in the frame. It is uh, opening uh, several uh, new logistic uh, options. You can, of course, easily do fractionation, like, uh, for example, on CyberKnife, uh, Linux based. So uh, this system offers mask fixation, so you can create individual uh, mask for for <clears throat> patient and uh, typically we're using very short fractionation scheme like three five fractions i think this is the the, the situation in most uh, worldwide departments but it is also um, opening uh, another options especially for centers which are very busy or for example don't have uh, present uh, uh, mr system in their uh, clinic or uh, centers which have hard availability to MR system. So you can scan like patient day before, you can do pre-planning, then you can position the frame, do quick Combeam CT co-registration, and then immediately treat. So that's what we're doing actually for our metas metastasis uh, patients. And it's very efficient. So instead of starting, typically we were starting, we used to start like eight o'clock. We, we starting very early, early uh, frame fixation around seven o'clock in our center. Uh, we are actually able to treat already a couple minutes after seven o'clock. So generally uh, it is bringing uh, more options, more freedom to when to scan patients, when to plan patients and how to use your time more um, efficiently. And it means generally you can increase also the number of patients you can treat. I will be showing you that now we are actually with ICON system capable to treat uh, about 1,200 patients uh, annually on this system. This was again the video. I don't know if it 
going to play? Probably not. Um, so I will try to explain for the icon before we go to planning for the icon, uh, especially for mask treatment. It uh, you do Convim CT uh, before every treatment as it's standard on Linux based or CyberKnife uh, based on CyberKnife you're using actually uh, X-ray system to orthogenal X-ray system which is, which is monitoring patient. Uh, you do co registration and then the software will calculate uh, shifts uh, and rotations. But we can adjust only shifts, so rotations are corrected uh, by uh, translations. And then you start the treatment, and during the treatment, patient is being monitored by infrared camera, which is uh, installed on the on the table, and is watching patients' uh, reflecting mark on the nose. Yeah. Uh, in, in the case when the patient uh, will uh, move and get out of the limits which you preset, uh, the radiation will stop and uh, the, 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 the treatment can be either continued or if patient is not uh, returning to, to, to uh, the original uh, position, uh, uh, you have to stop it and do new Convim CT and set the new reference. So do co-registration and again calculate uh, translations, rotations and correct actual position. This is showing what I was telling uh, you that you, you can really shape uh, amazingly uh, beams, uh, radiation for this perfection generation. You can use mixture of four, eight, 16 blocks, millimeter collimators. Also treatment of multiple metastasis is not the issue. It's rather a question of what uh, each department accepts. For example, we are relatively um, strict about number of metastasis, which we take uh, the total number of meds which patient has. Typically we try not to treat patient with uh, more than five, we actually did treat it, a couple of patients with, with higher number, but generally it's not our approach. But on the other hand, you have centers like, uh, especially in Japan, when they would treat 20, 30, 50, even more um, uh, small uh, metastasis. Yeah? So approach uh, to the indication of the patient to the treatment can be uh, quite different from the center to center, but technically it's possible and it's very straightforward. I will a little bit show the evolution on this patient, which was treated seven times of the treatment planning. So believe it or not, this is how we actually were doing planning uh, in 1992, 1993, you can see here, we had to print out either those lines on the paper and overlay it on the CT or MR images. So, so something like totally <laughs> unacceptable or very hard to imagine today. Um, in 1996, new generation of the treatment planning software, I would say standard, uh, what we were already used to at radiation oncology at that time for a couple of years came up uh, from Electa so we could uh, import images and treatment planning was of course done in the uh, in the system and the system uh, followed uh, standards which means um, it was calculating either those lines those volume histograms different statistics uh, you could calculate those gradient and uh, uh, the conformity indexes and, and, and so on. And new uh, treatment planning software um, came also with this inverse planning and the, the, uh, the, the, these uh, parameters which are uh, constantly being updated. So you do see not just either those lines, but you do see also coverage, selectivity, 
gradient index and total beam on time. It came uh, with the new uh, software generation. Electa also uh, significantly um, was working on the inverse planning. So initial software was not really very good, which was called Wizard. I don't think that many centers were using it. Then there is a software which I think majority of centers are now having and I suppose using, which is this perfection inverse planning. And then the top and really <coughs> excellent software is the Lightning, which I will uh, demonstrate in the next uh, uh, presentation. It is also necessary to mention that a new system is much safer. We all want to use the radiation for the treatment, but uh, we also want to deliver as, as low as possible radiation to patients. And uh, uh, in this respect, Gamma Knife is actually probably the safest system that uh, can be used. Uh, so this is work of uh, one of students. She unfortunately did not publish the work. This is from the publication of Ian Pedic and Christopher Lindquist. So this is showing um, perfection uh, data, distance from the isocenter and the, the, the basically dose and other technologies, as you can see, are here. So former gamma knife systems, CyberKnife. CyberKnife actually did improve the protection of the patient. So this line, if you would measure it now, would drop somewhere in here. Uh, is basically like other technologies. But gamma knife is pretty safe. We actually uh, did treat it three pregnant women with malignant disease. So waiting for baby delivery would be risky. So it's even safe for for the uh, for the. Uh, fetus uh, to <coughs> to treat uh, pregnant women. It's not standard, but if it's necessary to do, it can be done and it is safe. And the new system, as you can see uh, from perfection generation, it improved the dose to patient like factor of uh, 10 or so. Yeah. Efficiency, uh, as I mentioned, that was one of uh, the, the major goals to, 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 to sh cut down the time and allow to treat multiple metastases. So especially for multiple targets, like when you treating multiple metastases, you can see from this publication, this was done when I was um, in Pittsburgh. So we did some studies and comparisons and it's showing you can save a significant amount of time. You are not setting any coordinates manually, you are not setting um, even collimators manually, you basically don't need to go inside radiation room. It's all done automatically uh, by the system. So especially for these kind of patients, it's a significant amount of time which is saved sometimes like over one hour easily for, for, uh, for those uh, patients. Uh, at the same time, you can do better treatment. And then, as I mentioned, uh, the the earlier, uh, this is our growth of patients through the time. Of course, it's not just about the technical, the capability of system, what system can treat, but of course, it depends significantly how the whole program grew up uh, here at uh, Nahomolce Hospital. So this is really also dependent on the, especially work of physicians, how they promote it uh, and got the uh, patients from referee uh, doctors. But since <coughs> certain year it's sort of saturated and you can see that with perfection coming into the game, uh, we were able to increase like another 200 patients. And with icon coming coming also it's showing that we probably can treat uh, another let's say 100 at least maybe 150 200 cases per year so right now we actually uh, last couple of years we uh, approached to 1200 uh, 1, patients uh, per uh, per year yeah 
We are, of course, one of the busiest uh, centers worldwide. Probably in Europe, you will find maybe two uh, other centers which treating this number. I don't think anyone uh, is treating this number in North or South America. And possibly in Asia, there might be centers which are uh, that busy um, and, and treating over 1000 patients. The typical average on Gamma Knife is somewhere around, uh, I think, right now, like 400 patients per, uh, per uh, unit. Yeah, I want to mention a little bit. Uh, it, it's, uh, you are, uh, I assume, mostly physicists. So mention a little bit uh, about audits. We will be talking about the small field dosimetry, but uh, this is uh, about uh, the, the, the testing, the <coughs> whole treatment uh, procedure. Um, we do have actually uh, the institute which is taking care of that here. So after reloading, after installation of new systems, I did this audit and it's an on-site audit, so another physicist would come to our center and measure in this calibration phantom, but they also will measure the the, uh, the whole treatment chain, so basically using the uh, simulation of the patient's head. We supposed to image it and do treatment planning and treat it as we would do for the patient. And as you can see by using two small ion chambers, PTW 31010, which means uh, we have to actually measure the mean dose. Yeah, it, it, it's a still a relatively large volume, but small, small chamber 0.125 cubic centimeters. We can uh, uh, do this, uh, or the, the group from this institute can do this audit. You can also uh, uh, ask and look. I'm sure IAEA does have some option, but uh, I was used to work with uh, guys from MD Anderson for for the verification of SRS. So. In fact, I when already being back in Prague, I ordered also audit from this uh, from this uh, institute. And here it's a very straightforward you image target, which is like small spherical volume, and uh, this it's inserted into this phantom. You image it, and then you plan it. They will tell you exactly what they want to deliver, what dose, and how it should be covered, and then you. Uh, treated and inside this dosimetry ins insert there are two orthogenal films and two TLDs and then you mail it. Uh, this is the phantom which is not coming actually with the physicists from United States so it's it's a beauty of it that they will mail just the box with the phantom you deliver and treat the phantom deliver radiation mail it back and then in couple of weeks typically you will get uh, results so very elegant you of course have to pay a little something but those projects are typically very expensive so to hide this dosimetry audit inside a uh, big project when you for example reloading is should be relatively easy it's not that much money for for that so definitely I would suggest to do something um, like that in your systems, uh, especially after some major changes uh, when you do commissioning for the new system or when you are doing reloading, when you changing sources in your in your uh, systems. Here uh, some results uh, I actually did uh, recently, as you can see, uh, these audits three times because we were reloading and then uh, we were um, the changing, uh, we were changing reloading sources and then also we were upgrading to uh, the icon. So this is uh, it uh, basically from the first uh, presentation. So I will start to load my uh, second talk, but at the same time, if anybody has the any any questions,
please uh, feel free to ask now or you can keep it uh, at the end of uh, the, the this uh, webinar. So are there any questions? No questions, so. We lost some time by this. Uh, <coughs> by this. Um, technical issues, so I will quickly continue yeah. and as Can already. Ask, 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 yeah, Christian. So uh, as you know, uh, the, the gamma knife best as far as the gold standards. But what about the Linux best? If you compare in terms, if you want to give one to ten marks, if you want to treat one to ten mats, you said. If you scale it in terms of Linux best SRS and the Gamma knife best SRS, uh huh. You want to give a uh, score? Which score you are giving? Yeah, to well, I know people are quite often asking those questions, and uh, it's really. Uh, hard to say because I don't want to uh, uh, curse any 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 system uh, and I think actually the best uh, best and most objective situation is when you have all systems in Pittsburgh we had gamma knife we had stereotactic Linux which we mostly used for spinal radio surgery and there was also a uh, cyber knife. Yeah? So basically we can say we, 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 we had available all three systems. And I was getting those phone calls like what we should buy. We have a project, we have money, we have budget. Uh, so what we should buy? And I think the question is that you should ask what you're going to treat. What will be your patient spectrum? Yeah, if also in Dallas, Texas, where I worked uh, one year, we had a cyber knife next to gamma knife. Yeah, so we were 100% objective. We could actually choose. No one was dictating us. Uh, should we treat patient on gamma knife? Should we treat patient on cyber knife? And uh, I think the most important is to ask. So what sort of what sort of patients are we going to treat? If you know that you will be getting something like over 200 intracranial cases uh, per year would be my uh, reasonable guess. But of course, this is also medical question and, and maybe administrative uh, question as well, depending on how much pay you get per treatment and so on. I think Gamma Knife is superior. It's a, it's a very elegant system. I Never, at least in my life, uh, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but probably very hard to treat like six, seven patients per day on the basis that those patients will come in the morning at seven and it's like three o'clock and they're going home. They are done. Yeah, all procedures are done for those patients. So Gamma Knife is extremely efficient, extremely safe. Uh, but it's only for intracranial treatment, so that's a limitation, certainly. Uh, and especially for small targets, I actually think it's superior. It's it's probably capable to do better um, treatment planning if you would look to integral dose uh, to to brain and so on. In the mid-size and larger tumors, probably. Uh, CyberKnife and Linux based is comparable. And the greatest advantage of CyberKnife and Linux is, of course, that if you don't have intracranial patients, you can use it for different uh, treatments. Yeah, You can treat prostate, you can treat lungs, liver uh, and other uh, spine, of course. Um, so if you are not primary uh, like neurosurgically neuro radio surgery oriented uh, center that might be a superior system but if i would have to treat intracranial i would uh, sort of prefer gamma knife i think it's a, a safer um, more efficient 
At the same time, I don't want to say that Gamma Knife, uh, or uh, sorry, Cyber Knife or Linux-based system is not capable to 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 deliver a good radiation uh, treatment. Yeah, definitely. If you have a good uh, team uh, and if a good treatment planning is is done, and the all technical uh, aspects are uh, properly uh, addressed, definitely. Uh, all three systems can can we can also include this new uh, zap x uh, system yeah which is sort of similar to something like cyber knife even the design looks differently but it's 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 a similar also john adler which designed uh, cyber knife is a designer of the the, the zap x or is behind that so I don't know uh, if it answered uh, your question. It, 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 it's 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 a complicated uh, little bit. Sometimes those comparisons can be a little bit misleading. It depends how you set up your uh, the the uh, parameters what you want to compare. But this so, is my experience. Uh, when we had a choice, we would uh, pick a uh, gamma knife for intracranial. But of course, you can't really treat anything else except like till C1 is the maximum what you can reach on gamma knife. You can treat the uh, UL uh, melanomas, for example, so you can do uh, eye treatment, extracranial like jugular tumors, chemodectomas. But uh, that's it, yeah. But if you're not getting enough of those patients, then probably when considering what system to get uh, would be superior to, to, to have cyber or 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 uh, Linux based. Yeah. As, uh, just in addition, just a quick comment. In addition to, you know, both gamma knife based and neck based radio strategy are very old. So will the survival rates and uh, based on the literature will help us to decide that should we go is there any overall benefit of going with the cyber gamma knife if again if like reference in literature from gamma knife will have for other technologies is that the question or yeah we have I... a lot of literature based the patients have been treated both on the neck based srs and the gamma knife so if we compare the overall survival for those patients, because we know the nature of the disease, especially for the extracranial. So, well, unfortunately, it, the th there is uh, Electa likes to show a slide with the number of uh, publications which are uh, related to gamma knife uh, radio surgery and uh, which are related to like uh, cyber knife based and linux based and <coughs> majority of patients are really uh, and were treated on on uh, gamma knife so majority of experience coming from gamma knife when we talking about radio surgery of course my today's topic is strictly radio surgery i am not addressing any uh, and, and not even talking about body, of course, I'm talking about gamma knife, so uh, it, it is strictly related to intracranial uh, ra radio surgery. And I think partially it can be uh, used by Linux uh, and uh, and cyber knife people, but it's still different technologies. So so quite often they actually want to use fractionation. And then it's changing the the game because on gamma knife we most of the time treating um, single fraction. I maybe did not mention, but even now when we have mask option, we pre prefer to use frame. So last year when we treated 1,200 patients, let's say approximately, we did maybe just like 35 patients in mask. Yeah, frame is superior and <coughs> we prefer our doctors prefer to use uh, frame fixation because it's more rigid it's a less problem to uh, to, uh, to to treat patients also patient stays um, of course very stable 
when, when you put the frame on and then dock the patient compared to mask. So, so uh, as it comes to other uh, other like prognosis, uh, which maybe was also part of your question, like especially for metastasis, I think uh, everything is improving. Yeah, so generally patients surviving longer and longer, which means will metastasize. Uh, and if we can keep their uh, in talking again about just gamma knife intracranial problem free yeah because we can treat those patients multiple times sometimes patient can come again 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 five six eight times and every half year six months we can treat for some patients which uh, do have long uh, survival we can easily treat new meds. They are usually very small and uh, we can take care of, 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 of brain metastasis. If patients are, of course, those lucky ones, yeah, if they have a good prognostic factors, which means control of primary disease, control uh, the, like no dissemination and and good Karnofsky score and so on. So. Um, I think uh, radio surgery is going to play probably even more important role in the future for those kind of patients because the survival generally will will be and is uh, going to be longer. OK, so I hope that answered your question. I will quickly start my presentation. You already saw this patient. This talk is related and I really want to focus on lightning. Lightning is the commercial name of this new approach of the treatment planning. But I will also give you a little bit more um, inside view of the treatment planning on Lexa Gamma Knife. I didn't spend much time in other uh, pr the first presentation that was rather related to hardware, just a little bit addressed uh, that one. So I will focus on the treatment planning and some basic principles here and then we'll try to show and maybe share our experience with this uh, new treatment planning uh, inverse uh, treatment planning software from uh, Electa. So necessary to say very at the beginning is that only what can be achieved on Lexa Gamma Knife is this isocentric technique. Yeah? So we have in the older system, this uh, 201 beams. In perfection, we have 192 beams. We can change the size of beams. We can block some beams, but we cannot really um, change the direction of beams. They will always cross fire in one isocenter. So in order to deliver uh, the sufficient uh, radiation and cover the volume, we have to move the patient's head and like step by step, uh, deliver multiple isocenters in order to cover any shape. For example, CyberKnife is capable to do this cross firing of the target. This is on the right side, typical like CyberKnife uh, technique. And on Linux, uh, we mostly using, uh, I think, these modern technologies now, like those conformal arcs. So you have one or just a few isocenters and you doing arc uh, around uh, patient and you modulating heavily beam or you can do single uh, beams with the either static or any dynamic MLC uh, uh, modulation. Gamma knife is a strictly isocentric uh, technique. And I already uh, sort of address how we started, how the treatment planning was uh, being developed, so I can actually skip this one. And I don't know how many of you are from Gamma Knife uh, for the, the sort of assessment of your treatment plan. I would go to publication which was uh, uh, published by Michael Torrens as a primary uh, author. It was uh, supported by Lex Gamma Knife um, Society and published in Journal of Neurosurgery Supplementum after one of Gamma Knife meetings. 
and it, it has uh, sort of standards which we should follow when 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 doing treatment planning and when as making assessment of the treatment plan. Um, so just to quickly address couple uh, couple terms, uh, I guess you should be mostly familiar with coverage, showing how well we are covering target. Typically, we pushing for at least 95 in our center when it comes to benign tumor. But when it comes to malignant disease, we pushing higher. We accept 99, but most of the time we want to see 100% coverage. And then there are uh, <coughs> this selectivity, gradient index uh, terms, um, conformity indexes. There are several ones like Shaw conformity index and Pedic conformity index, which you can find in literature. And they basically all trying to describe the same, how well we are um, tailoring the dose distribution to the target. So selectivity is basically showing uh, uh, like ratio of the volume which is covering the, uh, the, the, the target volume divided by the volume of this isodose line. The perfect number would be this ratio would be equal to one. I would say when you see 0 0.8 and higher selectivity, you already can talk uh, about a relatively good treatment plan or actually very, very good treatment plan, I would say. Uh, and then we have one factor, one additional parameter, which is showing uh, how much dose do you giving outside because that's important too. We are not just focused about uh, uh, target. We are focused in critical structures. We are focused in uh, in the healthy tissue and especially when it comes to critical structures like optic nerve, brainstem, for example, we are very particular to do not exceed limit doses, of course. So this gradient index was uh, defined years ago uh, by Ian Pedic and the, the, the Border Lipids, I think is the first publication. And uh, it is very simple com concept. It is actually showing ratio of the 50% of isodose, volume of the 50% isodose line that you're using to cover your target. So just to give example what I what I mean, if I am treating on 50% isodose line, which is quite often the case in especially benign tumors, we are very close to 50% isodose line, I will calculate volume of 25% isodose line and divide it by 50. Typically, the <coughs> Uh, gradient index, which is less than three, we consider being reasonably good, 2.8, 2.7. That's what we would like to see. But especially with lightning, we quite often can see like 2.5 gradient index. So very low uh, spilling dose outside the target volume, which is very important. And beam on time parameter is important and I think also very obvious. Uh, we want to cut our time, especially for uh, some patients which are maybe not feeling good. Uh, and it should not be primary uh, parameter on the top of the list because we should, the number one should do the best treatment we can and then look in options if we can shorter the treatment time by uh, any way. So it is important, but not the most important parameter. Here is what I mentioned for ICON. So just quick uh, little repeat, we have only 4, 8, 16 millimeter collimator. We can, uh, uh, by combination of those sectors, we can combine them at the same time uh, for the same isocenter. We can, of course, use just uh, only 4, 8, 16 at the same time. It's really up to us or up to software when doing treatment planning. And in total, it has 192 beams. We can use both frame and mask. In our center, I, I mentioned, we definitely prefer uh, to uh, use the frame for majority of patients. And as you can see, patient uh, is being fixed here. 
for the mask treatments is being watched by infrared camera here. I did not, when I was describing it last presentation, it maybe uh, shows that. And this is comb beam CT, which can be used either for mask treatment or even for for the for the uh, frame treatment and verification. Um, I already mentioned that it's no big deal to really uh, shape radiation uh, very well uh, on gamma knife. The, the treatment planning can be done really in a and tailoring of the dose in, in a very uh, detailed way. It's also no issue to treat multiple targets. It's a rather clinical uh, decision. At this point, we can actually have three different approaches, and I don't know how many of you are uh, from gamma knife uh, units, so you can sort of uh, think uh, and compare what you're doing in, in your center uh, compared to what I will be uh, talking about. So for manual treatment, which I think is not really um, the, 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 the standard these days. I think most centers now, if available, would like to use some kind of optimization. Uh, because especially when you have to use multiple ISO centers, it's a very hard to think about like combination for particular each individual ISO center of beams. It's a, something like if you would have to manually plan your IMRT, uh, we may say it's impossible. So I think this is also kind of impossible. We can use maybe one or two shots and we can, uh, it, it's easy to think, okay, the tumor is elongated this way, so I will block these two sectors and it will become this way and elongate it. It's straightforward. But if you have very complex shape, if you have many uh, isocenters, let's say 10, 20 uh, used, it, it's a quite uh, quite hard, I think, to, to achieve this manually. So you sort of have to use some uh, inverse planning uh, anyhow. But it, in the old times, we were placing shots uh, or those isocenters. Typically, you try to place it inside, like two thirds in the inside target volume. You try to make a small overlap and usually try to be reasonable with number of shots, especially in the first generation of gamma knife systems. It was very difficult to treat a, a huge number of shots. So we tried to be very uh, sort of uh, optimal with the number of shots. <coughs> With the optimization, which commercially is named, uh, is called uh, dose optimization icon, which I hope um, most systems should have this available. It's a same uh, kind of placement of, uh, of those isocenters shots. Again, system is using typically small overlap. It's a reasonable but relatively high number of isocenters but it's using this mixture as you can see each color uh, yellow is four eight is uh, green and 16 is this purple and block is this blue one so you see it is using actually actually mixture of beams so from different angles around the patient, different uh, beam diameter is uh, being used. And the software is actually pretty good. We were, we did like this uh, icon optimization. It was doing pretty good job and helping to optimize um, the, 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 the dose distribution and, uh, and uh, by using those different uh, collimators. But uh, what is even better is this lightning. Yeah, I mentioned that we were test sites. They were there were maybe uh, I think around five centers worldwide which were involved in testing of this uh, new um, inverse treatment planning from Electa. And it looks like very similar what I'm showing here, but it's actually very different. I don't know if you can see it. It is totally changing the, the technique. 
We typically used to tell new users when going for system startups, do not overlap to those ISO centers too much. Yeah, it just keeps them apart. <clears throat> and this software is actually doing exactly opposite. It, it ha it's using a huge number of shots and it's huge, using huge overlay. Um, so it actually uh, leads you to the imagination that it's almost like a painting, yeah? Like you, you do one shot after each other and you sort of paint your dose distribution inside target. It, it's not really dynamic when you treat the patient, it's still each single shot, each single isocenter is being delivered. Each single isocenter can have very different the geometry of the beam in terms of beam size and, and um, the pattern which you using. Uh, but it's a huge number of shots and it's a, it, it's a huge overlap. Uh, I will show you surprisingly, you can immediately say, OK, it, it, maybe it's better, but it will take an uh, enormous amount of time. And I will show you that opposite is true, that this is actually doing better job, uh, but also it infects even cutting time uh, down by the optimized um, collimator size. So surprisingly, it's, it's a kind of shocking it's actually uh, shortening uh, overall uh, beam on time for 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 those patients um, i am not going now to spend too much time uh, about algorithm this is was designed by alecta anyhow but you are physicist so uh, i did included some information this can be found in Electa uh, Lexo Gamma Plan manual as well. In principle, we uh, I should mention that we do have like two algorithms. We have this TMR10, which I think majority of centers are using, and then convolution, which when if you do CT <coughs> and if you get uh, electron density, you can uh, you can correct for heterogeneities. But traditionally and the situation at the most centers worldwide is that we actually don't correct for heterogeneities. Heterogeneities like air cavities in some parts of the intracranial treatments and the bone. Uh, so brain and this skull, basically the, the volume of patients had is taken as a, as a as a water basically for this TMR10 algorithm and then it's a very straightforward calculation based on inverse square law exponential att attenuation in water of course you have to involve output factors and uh, those profiles which are in the system and i'm not going uh, through this formula which i took from manual uh, the lexo gamma plan manual anyhow but if you uh, want to it's it's here and available or uh, you, 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 can, you can find it in Lexo uh, Gamma Plan uh, manual. How does it work, this new lightning? I should uh, focus about this comparison and, and description of lightning. It's really, uh, for those of you which are coming from radiation oncology, it's nothing new. We just were waiting for a relatively long time to get similar uh, similar uh, tools and similar level of inverse planning uh, at the Lexa uh, Gamma Knife. So we define targets, we define critical structures, possibly some tuning structures, we define constraints and then we run it. Uh, you will see it's extremely quick actually on 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 uh, current hardware which Electa delivers with the with this software it's really um, within one minute for most of uh, uh, plans so you can run it multiple times you can change some constraints and you can test which plan is the best so for example for this uh, particular patient we would define target some tuning structures and of course critical structures such as brainstem and uh, optic nerve 
and then you can uh, address those um, uh, parameters here. So you basically tell what should be the minimum dose to the target. So let's say it's a benign tumor like this one. We want to deliver 12 gray uh, most probably for this kind of tumor. We have optic nerve which accepts uh, maximum uh, 8 gray in single fraction. Uh, brainstem like 12 gray, so you can address it here. And similarly, if you want to protect some some structures in the brain, you have to design those tuning structures. That's just exactly the same with what, what you're doing at uh, um, other systems like Linux based, uh, CyberKnife based, ZAP based uh, systems. <coughs> For those parameters, for most of the time, you can actually use the preset numbers. It's a beam on time and the, the this dose, which is uh, telling how important it is that you protect the brain. But with 0 0.5, it's actually calculating pretty well. We sometimes using this uh, this time parameter, especially for like larger metastasis, when you pull it to the right and increase like waiting factor for time. You, you're telling the inverse uh, planning iteration algorithm. This is important parameter for me to please try to reduce the dose. Also here you can click check those boxes and tell the software that you want coverage for uh, the especially like uh, the, the, the metastasis or generally malignant disease that you're asking and pushing for full coverage. If you don't check it, the software will give you some, I would say, balance treatment plan. We are not pushing for 100% coverage in our center for like meningiomas, for acoustic tumors, for example, because at the same time, when you're pushing for 100%, you of course increasing the dose which you're giving outside. So it, it's always, the game of compromise. So usually we we, we have like 97% coverage with the uh, very good uh, like conformity indexes uh, and other parameters and especially doses to critical structures. So nothing really new for those of you which are used to work with the conventional radiation oncology systems, some case example here um, i don't know how you actually can see it in what is being projected on your screen i have only a very small uh, picture here but uh, the the goal to, was to show how detail uh, the shaping and protection of critical structures lightning can do and it's also being shown here that it's safe for optic nerve safe for brainstem and that we uh, getting uh, optimal uh, coverage. So let me a little bit uh, show uh, the the ability of the lightning. It, it, I think it's necessary to say that we uh, most of the team is very experienced here uh, working with Gamma Knife, some of us like 30 years. And um, so it was interesting for us to, 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 to see how this new inverse planning will do, if it really can improve and in what parameters. So we designed very uh, straightforward study. Uh, we took 40, 40 uh, difficult, really complex uh, cases, 10 meningiomas, 10 acoustic tumors, 10 pituitary adenomas, and 10 large single metastases. And we look in various uh, parameters. I don't know for what reason it disappeared. We look for <coughs> different <coughs> parameters uh, to 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 address and compare uh, the the way the planning was done till now and then since the lightning was implemented. What is a little bit difficult uh, with lightning is that it is like a good car. It, it goes uh, and does what you want. So um, 
if you ask for something, it, it is trying to reach your goals. So what I am presenting here and what you will see as a result is sort of the, the some kind of best compromise which we tried to search for. And it might be different from center to center. And this is mostly medical decision. So MD doctor decision what they prefer for particular diagnosis. So this is what is important for us uh, for meningioma to to have minimum dose to critical structures, to have very good coverage, better than 95 if possible, have a good conformity, selectivity indexes, and reasonable treatment time. We don't care that much about time. This is uh, exactly the same is the criteria for acoustic schwannoma. So this is what we pushing when treating acoustic schwannoma. It can be slightly different in different center. Yeah, maybe you say, oh, we don't have time. The time is most important that the treatment will be short. I don't care that much about which would be bad, of course, particularly in those kind of patients. But this is our criteria to protect critical structures, give coverage better than 95 and then have, if possible, very good uh, those indexes and uh, time is less important. In the case of pituitary adenoma, it's a tricky uh, diagnosis because we are very close to optic nerve. Quite often we want to deliver quite often high dose. We are close to brainstem. But on the other hand, it's a, this conformity is quite specific because we want to be very conformal here and very safe to optic nerve, but we don't care that much here below. It's not much to damage or here in the cavity. So conformity may be not that important uh, in, 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 in these patients. I mean the number which the, you will or software will calculate. But again, very important is the to protect critical structures, of course, and uh, time is also not as um, important. On the other hand, in metastasis, I think coverage is very important for us. We pushing really for 100% coverage in terms of uh, generally malignant, uh, when treating malignant disease. Um, we know that the survival for those patients, it's typically gen generally very, very short, uh, one year. Uh, uh, about for uh, like a mean mean survival for metastasis. So we can maybe accept a little bit higher doses to critical structures and conformity indexes may be not as important. Sometimes those patients having multiple metastasis or are not in a good uh, stage, not having good Karnofsky uh, score, uh, so to tolerate long treatment would be hard for them. So we try to reduce treatment time. Yeah. So in these cases specifically, we try to push and see if the software can calculate the better um, those distribution in terms of still giving us excellent uh, good uh, good plan, but being able at the same time to reduce time. So this is very busy slide um, um, and I am plotting all data which came out from this study. And this is manual or, or this uh, per, uh, the uh, perfection or icon optimization software. So basically how it was done before lightning and then how it was done with lightning. So we have mean, minimum, maximum and median, <coughs> median, uh, median, which is uh, being plotted here. And I am not going to uh, go through like line by line because I have a summary coming in the next slide. But if you read it carefully, if you are really interested in uh, how lightning is beneficial, you will see that in most parameters, actually, it uh, did better. It can possibly, uh, if you would be doing this study and if you push in a slightly different way, maybe you would less relax, for example, for critical structures and you would push, for example, more for gradient index. I'm sure you would be able to get better result here, which as you can see, for example, here it was almost similar. 
identical. So that's what I was saying, that you have to choose some directions, some way you want to create the plan. And Lightning is actually pretty good to follow. So sometimes it's a little bit tricky to, to, to decide what you want. So we uh, physicists which were doing this study in our center, we kind of followed the same rules which would be followed clinically for the standard uh, treatments. So what were the results uh, this summary? As you can see, as already mentioned, it's extremely fast. So median calculation for those difficult cases was 35 seconds. So it, it is giving you really almost immediate uh, answer. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a very quick uh, calculation. It's the main reason is, of course, that for gamma knife, it's not as difficult like for some Linux treatments. So, so you, it allows you to calculate and try multiple uh, options, variations of the plan and pick the best which you want. It also um, showed uh, the uh, those parameters or this these were basically uh, changes uh, uh, which I'm showing here in this summary. So mean dose was reduced by around six percent, selectivity improved by nine percent. I already addressed gradient index, which in our study did not change much. Shaw conformity index, it's this initial parameter to show its uh, prescription isodose volume divided by target volume. So typically we do see ratio by like 1 to 5, 1.4, 1.2. Um, it also improved volume of 12 gray line is supposed to be a risk uh, clinical complications predictor also improved. And uh, volume of 80 and 90 percent line um, changed uh, those to critical structures, especially improved uh, significantly. So by 12 percent for optic, uh, around 9 percent for cochlea, 5 percent for healthy pituitary gland tissue. And this is what I already mentioned. It's a, it's a shocking that you're getting something better. And usually when you're getting something better, you have to pay for that with some tax. Uh, in here, you just uh, not paying anything. You in fact getting even shorter uh, treatment time. So in our situation, in our case, the treatment was around uh, like almost 15% shorter. Yeah, be on time for those patients, despite if I go back, this is actually maybe uh, interesting to show from this table. Despite if you look here, number of shots when using this previous treatment planning, we used like 19 because those were really complex cases. Yeah, again, those were large tumors very tricky shape, shape tumors, and you see um, lightning use like 43, so like three times more shots, yeah? But despite of that, the total treatment time is shorter. Why is that? Because lightning is capable to more efficiently use larger collimators, obviously. With larger collimator, you get a higher dose rate, so you're delivering uh, your dose inside target quickly. That's that's the trick, basically. That uh, why it's uh, uh, this way. Um, I should mention uh, because that's a typical question. So how often you're using it? I would say we want to use it for all patients, or I should say almost all patients. There is no reason to use it for single shot treatments. There is no reason to use it for fun, like functional treatments, of course. And in some situations, um, we, uh, especially uh, head of department, uh, chief neurosurgeon, he does prefer to use manual treatment, like for some pituitary adenomas. Uh, he would calculate both options, but uh, quite often 
for those particular patients, you would pick the 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 manual one because it's, for example, hard to tell. This is not important. The bottom of the tumor, the the the, the direction where uh, you're going, where you, you can actually spell the dose. This is something hard to tell to the software. Uh, but otherwise, we are really uh, using it for all patients. So we, you have to contour everything and then run it, and it's very quick. It's actually uh, shortening treatment time. So our work when we preparing the plan, but it is also shortening the beam on time when the patient is actually being treated. So also, I think. Not just icon uh, recent upgrade when it's changing logistic uh, led to uh, the increase of the number of patients, maybe 100, <clears throat> 150 per year, but uh, also this new software is definitely uh, helping uh, a lot. It, it's a tremendous uh, help and uh, uh, not just time efficiency but of course it's improving also quality which i think at the end of is uh, the most important that we do the better to 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 our patients so i'm heading to uh, i think the last uh, slide so this is it uh, about lightning unfortunately as far as i know um, or i'm almost sure electa is not giving this this software for free or as an automatic uh, part of the treatment planning software you have to specifically um, pay for it unfortunately we were suggesting that it's a sort of mandatory uh, part of the software so there is no option like to select or not uh, select uh, lightning that every new installation will automatically get uh, this inverse planning because especially in new centers uh, I think it can save uh, a lot of trouble yeah when you have stuff which is not capable to do good planning this can as soon as you contour uh, properly uh, target volume and critical structures it can really do amazing job for you and can do it very quickly so that's our suggestion but of course we are not business people when traveling like with my colleague for system startups we told Electa but um, it's it's a, it's a uh, it could be a regional uh, decision of uh, the sales managers of course so this is uh, this is it uh, if there are any questions please uh, ask questions now and I will be slowly moving to my uh, last uh, presentation. So any questions to the planning in general or one thing uh, I did not mention it maybe and I again I don't know what is your um, your um, sort of group profile, how many of you are working with any like CyberKnife or Linux based technology. Uh, one beauty of GammaKnife is that it's always possible all those inverse uh, plannings uh, is always uh, possibility to tune it, tweak it manually. So what I can do if this inverse planning calculates uh, for me like distribution of 50 isocenters, I can delete, change uh, any single isocenter. I can even add manually, yeah, individually. If we do see there is a little voxel actually not covered, our radiation oncologist which would always push in the case of metastasis, please place the little shot there and cover it so we get 100% uh, coverage. So that's a um, very different compare <coughs> when I used to work with Linux or CyberKnife when it was um, some parameters could be changed, <coughs> some parameters could be um, manually influenced, but mostly it was uh, this communication through those 
volumes and constraints, especially in the case of CyberKnife. It was a very uh, sort of closed system, so we had to control targets, tuning structures, set up constraints and run it, run it again, change constraints, change structures, but no way to manually uh, tell the system something um, very difficult uh, sometimes. Uh, of course, once you get used to it, it, it's working properly and nicely and uh, definitely you can do beautiful plans on both CyberKnife and Linux based systems. Uh, I, I, I can confirm that because I work with them. But uh, so this is just a note about inverse planning. So no questions about planning. OK, so I am going uh, to the last. I have just few slides, uh, but I will be <coughs> stopping a little bit in details. Um, so hopefully we'll address. Uh, this was actually sent as an abstract and then presented. Uh, you can see it and I left the presentation as it was presented uh, on this European Congress of Medical Physics. It uh, which happened last year in uh, Italy. Um, so we have actually already several years available this new IAEA APM uh, uh, document, basically new code of practice for small uh, beams and non-standard beams. I remember when I was leaving United States in uh, like 2010, 2011, that was my last year, we were in fact helping ELECTA to measure some of those uh, parameters. And then it took several years, really years, years, years to publish the final version of this um, uh, document and I'm sure there are at least many, many, many gamma knives. I would say most gamma knives which are still not calibrated according to this new protocol. So now you can ask yourself, uh, do I actually, I, am I using this? If you're using, of course, small, small uh, beam um, technology in your department, am I using this novel, uh, the, the standard? I would call it standard, I would not call it novel. And uh, uh, in fact, in gamma knives, I think actually most centers would answer no. Unfortunately, when I go as a physicist for ELECTA and when I do calibration, I'm using some slightly different protocol, which is ELECTA ones, and it's not including this uh, TG483 uh, protocol, unfortunately. Don't ask me why. I <coughs> am um, just trying to address that still, despite the document is out, uh, that many physicists, centers, organizations still did not apply it. So maybe this lecture at least will uh, lead you to think about it, maybe read it. It's everything inside this document. Uh, also, some people did complain that it's not maybe well organized, but I think you can really find uh, everything <coughs> in there. I do see problem of small field dosimetry in a couple, uh, couple things. Uh, one thing is the detector size. Uh, we're dealing with the extremely small beams, so detector choice is the absolutely the most important thing. So if you are not sure, uh, look in this uh, new protocol, call your colleague, ask questions, please. Because especially in, uh, in the um, relative dosimetry, when you're going to very small beams, like in gamma knife four millimeter, if you use wrong detector, for example, I can give you an example, if I would use a pinpoint chamber, it, it's a tiny one, a 16 chamber with, with very small volume, 0 0.006 cubic centimeters, so tiny little chamber, I still would end up with the error of like 20%. So you have to be very careful, 
really that's a that's a that's a uh, one big red flag when uh, you <coughs> especially me measuring those relative dosimetry for very small beams as it comes to absolute dosimetry it's important too and definitely you cannot use the standard chamber 0 0.6 cubic centimeters but if you use proper chamber for example in, in gamma knife uh, we're using this ptw 31010 but you can use uh, for example um, extra thin chambers with small volume generally something which is this volume and smaller i would say not go don't go below don't go above uh, this uh, th this volume uh, and you, you should be uh, safe then. Then you should not uh, end up with any significant errors for both relative and absolute uh, dosimetry. So document has actually uh, what we should do, how we should do it and with what kind of detector we should do it, even with what kind of phantom we should do it. So here you have like list of detectors, uh, suggested chambers for uh, gamma knife absolute calibration and suggested uh, <coughs> detectors for relative measurements. You can see that some of them can be used for 16 and 8, but not for 4 millimeters. So again, be careful if it's showing no correction factor, you should not use those for, for uh, the relative measurement of 4 millimeter. And then to do your measurement is actually, I would say, very straightforward. Uh, you, which are gamma knife uh, physicists, you should be familiar with this uh, ABS, plastic spherical phantom, ABS, acetobutylene, styrene, uh, styrene, is the plastic which is almost water equivalent is a very little error if you if you suppose it is it is it is uh, the the water this is the traditional way to calibrate i would say but uh, recently years ago electa uh, designed this uh, dosimetry uh, phantom which is solid water phantom i definitely suggest if you can to use this phantom it's a much better phantom it's much better mimicking uh, patient's um, uh, fixation uh, it has a smaller corrections and so on so on so generally better but it's very expensive phantom unfortunately yeah? unless it comes with your system uh, uh it's costly i think it's something like fifty thousand us dollars don't quote me i don't know the lo uh, current price but it's 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 a pretty expensive uh, phantom you can you can ask your local uh, representative of electa of course but then it's actually very easy uh, because what this uh, new protocol tried to address is to correct for all uh, those uh, miss uh, how to say uh, uh, the, the 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 parameters which are not fulfilled for the standard calibration you are used to calibrate in water 10 by 10 field typically uh, 10 centimeter depths uh, on, on 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 linux right um, but you will never be able to set up such a conditions on cyber knife, tomotherapy, gamma knife, Zapex, and so on and so on. So, so uh, uh, they tried to create correction factor for your conditions. And this correction factor is correcting for everything, for the detector which you will use, for the phantom which you will use, even for the system which you will use. So here, I am measuring as an example, I am measuring with this chamber. So I find the chamber. I am measuring in in a solid water phantom. So it's here, solid water, and I am measuring it on perfection. And immediately I get this K factor. And then it's a standard, uh, the, uh, the step by step procedure, which you should be familiar. So you have NDW, uh, so calibration in water at cobalt 60, so same energy, 
and you multiply it uh, by the corrected um, uh, the signal uh, corrected for temperature, pressure, saturation, saturation, polarity coefficient, and then you just based on this new recommendation multiply it by the K factor. Similarly, for those relative measurements like relative output factors, which is denoted by the sigma, it's a ratio of signal. Uh, like signal from for one minute, uh, for example, measured on four millimeter divided by 16, which is the maximum field size on perfection, and eight millimeter divided by 16. But again, this ratio, which we normally used to uh, use, must be corrected by this uh, correction factor. And again, Different detector has a different correction and has a <coughs> sorry for the different correction for different uh, uh, collimator size. So uh, you multiply it and then you immediately have uh, the result. So nothing really to be worried about. It's a, of course a big document, but then when you focus on your technology, when you search the tables, and when you read it, I think it's a it's uh, should be easy to understand and easy to follow. This is just showing uh, my results. I had to recalibrate when we were upgrading because I knew that my audit will be done by people which are already using new recommendations. So I think in 2019 we changed to and followed this new protocol. And since I have both phantoms, I actually did this. I thought it might be interesting. I did this like four different combinations. So the best is, of course, to do in so, to do measurement uh, of absolute uh, calibration. So basically dose rate measurement to do it in solid water phantom and follow this new recommendation. Then do it in solid water phantom and uh, follow the older TRS 398 and then do it at ABS and follow new recommendation and then do it at ABS and follow old uh, uh, calibration protocol, protocols 398. You can see that actually for the absolute dose it's not as big disaster. I am using a correct chamber PTW 31010 with the volume of 0 0.125 cubic centimeters. And the difference between those uh, approaches is relatively small. So the change in our treatment planning system to our calibration was relatively small by like 1.4%. So it's no disaster. It's not like that this a uh, new um, the protocol uh, means that you will have to send letter to like 20,000 patients that you treated till now and tell them that you are you were actually 15% off of course not despite we were doing some approximations they were not as terrible considering you used a uh, correct chamber but it should be definitely applied i think we physicists should measure as as correct as possible recommendation is here we can use it so why don't uh, recalibrate your system and and make this small uh, tiny change significant error can be done if you would uh, do uh, output factor measurement and uh, use the wrong detector uh, here I also did a little bit exercise, so for 8 and 4 I did measurement in ABS and also use both like the non-corrected for small field and corrected and the same in solid water and necessary to say that all data which uh, comes here are measured for with a micro diamond uh, detector if i didn't uh, mention it before but uh, should be on the, uh, this uh, like second slide <coughs> <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it is actually showing uh, 
I would say, reasonable agreement for all measurements with ELECTA calculated numbers by uh, Monte Carlo. Uh, I should probably mention here what uh, other detectors could be used, uh, or at least which I have a good experience with. Of course, you can try to use stereotactic diodes, which should work uh, properly for measuring such a small uh, output factors. You can use uh, films, but films are a lot of headache. It's a lot of work. You have to follow step by step, uh, sort of very particularly procedure, how you scan films, be careful that they don't get damaged, do subtraction of background and so on, so on, so on. It, it's, it's a lot of parameters, but we also did measurement actually on Gamma Knife with uh, films years, years ago, and it could be, <coughs> could be used. I'm just trying to s emphasize, uh, say that sometimes the hospital will not buy you new detector, but if you have films, you can you can measure it with films, possible. Uh, scintillation detector is the new kind of detector, which is supposed to be the good one. Um, and as far as I know, uh, the MOSFET was also used for measurements. A uh, tiny little like uh, TLD rods or uh, like small alanine dosimeters, I'm not sure. I think this is rather uh, the, the, the post-tal dosimetry. So uh, we should use some system which we can probably immediately evaluate in our center. It's past TLD and alanine, it's probably very difficult to, to make such a small chips. <coughs> so that would be it. Definitely uh, avoid to think about chambers. You will not find a chamber on the market that would be capable to measure probably correctly output factor like for four millimeter, unless uh, you would use uh, probably liquid chamber, which was available commercially from 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 PTW years ago, but as, as far as I know, they stopped production and it's the, it's not currently available. So uh, it brings me to the last slide and uh, it says that uh, it's, I personally would definitely suggest to convert to TRS483 if you haven't done so and if you do have technology which is in your center. You should not see big changes <coughs> in terms of uh, in terms of uh, absolute dose calibration. Um, and um, if you select, uh, if you pick a correct detector, I suppose you should find very good agreement in in the case of gamma knife with electa calculated numbers. It's not just my measurement, but there were several measurements uh, published, presented, independent Monte Carlo calculations. So I definitely want to stress that output factors that we do have now in Lexogamma plan are very trustworthy. Uh, I would not change them. We really just doing verification for our particular system with those output factors, so I would not touch them. If you're measuring something very different, then I would say your measurement is probably wrong. So be very, very careful if you would be uh, changing output factors at uh, gamma knife. Yeah, in many systems, of course, you typically measure your own uh, factors, but uh, for gamma knife, they come as a default and those measurements uh, proved uh, we are very close and consistent. Um, so we didn't change. We didn't change like 1.5% uh, or less than 1%. We, we kept ELECTA numbers. And uh, again, as much as I know, uh, most users uh, following this approach, that they keeping those default values because it also brings uh, the consistency in the treatment, especially for, for uh, functional treatments. So this is it from my side. Uh, I was speaking almost, well, one hour, 45 minutes. Sorry for those technical issues at the beginning. Uh, if you have any questions now, 
to this last very last presentation or if you have any questions to other presentations you you, you can ask uh, now Thank you very much. Um, uh, I have some questions, have some questions. Um, um, about this about uh, TRS, this, uh, TRS 483. 483. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to know that uh, it is only applicable for cyber knife, gamma knife, and tomotherapy, or it is also applicable for Linux uh, based SRS system. You well, I am not now Linux guy, but as much as I know, uh, you, you should have those, uh, especially those FF. Uh, Filter yeah, free. triple F. Yeah, triple F. Uh, <laughs> F <laughs> beams. There should be. Um, I am not sure if uh, for those dynamic treatments like uh, small conformal arc treatments, I don't think that we that it's 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 ready yet. But but for FFF uh, beams, uh, as much as I know, people using it already. Okay. So, uh, do you have any idea that uh, for the triple F beams, we do we have to recalibrate the triple F beams with the TRS-483, or is there any recommendation? I think you sh I think you should follow uh, this uh, new recommendation, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I am not Linux guy now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I was okay. not really uh, using this new recommendation for any other technology than than for um, gamma knife. Yeah. I did commissioning on cyber knife years ago. I can imagine it's probably easy and very similar like for gamma knife uh, to go there find the table with correction factors based on your detector and use them but i <coughs> can't comment really now for linux based yeah okay. sorry for uh, that. about the gamma knife or cyber knife how uh, do you calibrate basically i want ju i just want to understand the procedure like uh, our chamber is calibrated against the cobalt 60 ndw factor so yes. when you got the, your chamber, so how, what's the procedure uh, about the relative yes, dosimetry? Yes, it's the same. Yes, yes, it's the same here uh, in Czech Republic. Every two years we have to go to calibration laboratory. I get NDW uh, and then <clears throat> I follow this procedure, which uh, which uh, is shown here. So to measure dose rate, uh, you <coughs> <clears throat> have to use one of those uh, spherical phantoms. So I'm using PTW 31010 chamber, uh, the same electrometer from the PTW uh, Unidos, which is of course calibrated every two years uh, as well. And then it's a very uh, standard measurement. Uh, you uh, using typically timer, not typically, that's the way it should be done really. Um, now uh, on gamma knife, you you set like whatever 20, 30 minutes on gamma knife beam on time, and then you using timer of the electrometer. If it's a uh, this kind of chamber, one minute is fine. If it would be is smaller chamber, then maybe you can do measurement for two minutes to collect uh, more signal. And then uh, you're using this uh, formula, yeah. You correct signal uh, by by uh, for temperature, pressure, and just simply uh, multiply it by NTW and the correction factor from this new recommendation. Okay, that's, thank you. Yeah, okay. that's it. Pretty pretty straightforward. Of course, very important part is, uh, but Electa is now. Uh, <coughs> offering you those inserts. Both phantoms are based on it's like sphere and here we have a plate which must be exactly drilled for your chamber so it sits right at the focus where all beams cross uh, uh, fire. Um, and similarly here we have a like cylinder which when you insert if you insert your chamber it should sit nicely in the center of you know where all beams are focused um, but right now you don't need any special machinery shop and try to explain them what you want Electa should be able to actually give you both inserts either plate or this 
cylindrical insert. And this is, of course, very important. I didn't mention that, but of course, if your geometry setup would be wrong, then of course you can measure uh, most probably a smaller dose if you would be off uh, from the isocenter, of course. Yeah, so it's, it's a critical, but easy to take care of uh, to get the, uh, the, the inserts from Electa, I would say. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. If no questions, I am sending uh, all the best to Pakistan. Good, good, good luck with your technologies departments and most uh, importantly with your patients. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for staying almost two hours. Uh, Hello. Uh Hello, not me. I just want to le let you know that uh, in Pakistan there are uh, three centers having gamma knife, mm -hmm. uh, two in Karachi, and one is uh, Gambat in Sindh. Yeah, I visited so, two actually. Yeah. I was in Gambat okay. and I was in yeah. one center at Karachi. Yeah, okay. so out of three, I had a chance to visit uh, two gamma knife centers actually. Okay. Yeah, recently. Yeah. As a thank you very much for your time, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, and take care and uh, and, and uh, all the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, just a little quick, <clears throat> just some fine comments. I would like everybody to fill out the evaluation session evaluation forms, and our next session of March. But for updates, you will have to subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Thank you all.